For over 35 years, video games have played a vital role throughout our history. From Pac-Man, to Mario, to Sonic the Hedgehog, the industry has managed to produce a legacy that runs deep into our culture. As you'll see in this series, the journey from point A to point B is not as clear cut as one would expect. And along the way, there are many hardships, rivalries, and cutthroat industry tactics that shape the industry into what it is today. But in order to tell this interesting saga, we must go back to the golden age of video gaming. In the fall of 1977, the video game market was in the middle of its first real video game crash. The arcade scene was filled with a rehash of old video game ideas, and the home consumer market was drowning in a sea of Pong consoles. <laughs> By October 1977, Atari had been sold to Warner Communications, who are now calling the shots for Atari. By thinking outside the box, they introduced a brand new home console for the holiday season that would challenge everything that was currently on the market, the Atari VCS. The major innovation used here was the interchangeable cartridge system idea that was introduced with the Fairchild F. By using this, Atari knew this feature would extend the life of the product since players could insert a new game anytime they got tired of the old one. With this new console came newly designed controllers that included a joystick and a single action button. All right, let's just see what this action button does. What the hell? Fire in the hole! <laughs> also included were switches that controlled the color, a game select button, the difficulty, and last but not least, a reset button. 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 <sighs> On October 1st, 1977, the Atari was released for $199.99. And here's a fast fact. Atari made no money off the console itself. In fact, they overpriced the game cartridges in order to turn a profit since they only cost $2 to make. Early game cartridges were also numbered and color-coded to signify the genre of the game it belonged to, but that was quickly phased out as more games were released. During the launch window, Atari had nine games to choose from, and the first of these was the arcade version of Tank, but scaled down so that it could fit inside this small cartridge. Renamed Combat, this game came packaged along with the Atari. By pressing the Game Select button, you'll be able to cycle through a bunch of game boards to choose from. Master them all, and you could just find yourself in the Combat Hall of Fame. Woo! Yeah! If one actually Woo! existed. <laughs> and you were not just limited to playing as tanks either. You could play as an airplane, a jet, or a whole fleet of jets. Bow before the might of three of us at once! Of course, flying three planes at once does make you a bigger target. Bozos let me down for the last time! <laughs> Why I gotta... Hey, leave him alone! Quiet, you! The second game released was also a ported arcade title called Indy 500. And for this game, we're gonna need the second paddle controller. This game has tons of different tracks to choose from, and the point is to drive around the track faster than the other player can. Well, if you can get the controls to work properly for once... What the hell? Who the hell's driving this car? Oh, yes! The third game was, of course, a home console staple, Pong. But just to trick everyone into buying the game, this cartridge was called Video Olympics. All right, an Olympics game. Let's check this out. Pong! Yep, there's no pole vaulting in this game. Instead, you'll find every single variation of the game Pong ever imagined under the hood of this cartridge. One player Pong, two player Pong, four player Pong, off the wall Pong, soccer Pong, foosball Pong, goalie Pong, Genghis Pong, inverted Pong, King Kong Pong, rebound Pong, Hong Pong Fooey. Yep, it's a freaking Pong of Palooza. The fourth game here was another racing game called Street Racer. In this game, your car remains stationary, but the other cars will either zoom past you, or you can press the action button and zoom past them at breakneck speeds. 
let's try this again. Oh, come on! Aha, Magoo, you've done it again! And when you're tired of doing that, you can also play as a jet, a car, and whatever the hell this thing is. Uh, just forget it. The fifth game here is called Air Sea Battle, and it's another two-player game that requires you to move your gun turret around and clear the board of multiple rows of targets moving along at various speeds. Hit the Game Select button, and you'll bring up different screens, different enemies, and even a stage with movable gun turrets. Oh, hello. <coughs> Stupid guns. The sixth game, Starship, allows us to fly around in space, shooting things like flying saucers, aliens, asteroids, and even Klingon warbirds of prey? Well, no matter, fire at will, Mr. Spock! And rounding out the last of these three titles is a game named Jack Black, oops, I mean Blackjack, Basic Math, really? The answer is six! Ah, ah, oh shut up! And the game Surround, in which players maneuver a dot around the screen, leaving a trail behind it that is deadly upon touch. All right, Blue, prepare to meet your maker! Not so fast, Green! I almost gotcha! We're going down! Ah! Yes! Woo! During the holiday season of 1977, Atari had sold 250,000 consoles, making it a huge success. Nolan Bushnell, however, had made it loud and clear that he thought Atari should ditch the VCS after the holiday season and move on to create a bigger and better console. Warner Communications, on the other hand, was behind the VCS 100% and vetoed his decision. They also hired a man named Ray Kassar to be Atari's new consultant, and Ray started by creating a marketing campaign that would keep the VCS from getting lost on the retail shelf. Attention shoppers! <laughs> The new Atari cartridge game is in. Excuse me. <laughs> Uh-oh. George again. Atari's air sea battle. It comes with 27 games, but that's just for starters. You can get nine cartridges, 187 Ooh, games. Blackjack. <laughs> oh! I'd like an Atari. Sorry. Only our demonstrators left. Mine! No, George. Mine. The new video computer system by Atari. <laughs> more games, more fun. At this point in time, the tide of the video game crash was slowly changing. But before it was completely over, the arcade game side of things would need something special to get players excited again. Coming up next, the arcade games of 1978.